All right, good news, and I'm an idiot news. They'll never know I'm here. Oh, my battery's dying. Now, we're prepared. Where did the grief go? Why am I such an idiot? Don't answer that, Brittany. Okay, well, that's two things that I seem to have forgotten. So, I'm not gonna talk about the first thing because that was gonna be what the video was about. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to a forgetful wildlife episode. Forgot my teleconverter. I almost never ever take it off like if it's during the daytime for my my 500 f4 mark ii i always have the 1.4 teleconverter on here and i pretty much never take it off during the day because the kind of stuff that i shoot 700 f5.6 is is pretty good and then i usually have this in crop mode for uh this is my r5 for 1120 millimeters f5.6 especially for small stuff and like ducks that are far away and skittish makes me happy. So it makes me sad that I forgot my teleconverter. Why did I take it off? I don't remember. Oh well, unfortunate. So today we're rolling with uh, 800 F4 because I'm gonna keep this in crop mode, obviously. <laughs> also, have you guys ever heard corvids other than like uh, crows or ravens, like jays specifically, have you ever heard them mimic other birds? Because they do that. And camera lady and I rolled up, we got out of the car and we heard an eagle. And we were just like, all of a sudden we were just like, oh, there's an eagle nearby. If you get that movie reference, you're amazing, but you probably won't. But anyways, yeah, we started to listen and it's like, then I, I saw these uh, jays up here, these Stellar's jays and a scrub jay. And it's like, I think the jays are mimicking the eagles because there's, there's no eagles. There's just the jays. <laughs> but maybe there really is an eagle nearby. And if there is, hopefully I'm gonna shoot it in its face. Let's see how well that goes with uh, 500 millimeters. 800 cropped millimeters. Shoveler. Got a few northern shovelers. A couple ready ducks and some coots. And they're all very far away. And I don't have my teleconverter. And I'm just not going to stop being sad about that. I'm also not going to try to uh, be super blendy and quiet today because mostly I'm looking for eagles. But like I didn't bring my camo or a uh, blind or anything like that so i am hoping for mergansers but uh I, since i'm not even like taking this seriously <laughs> i'm not gonna take the chance of seriously seeing them or getting a good mergenzer shot Good news, 
and I'm an idiot news. So I'm sitting here and I'm waiting, checking out these northern shovelers, and one of them decides to take off. So the good news is I knew it was coming. My settings were prepped, everything. I've got the shutter speed, all the technical settings that I want. And uh, I got the shot, actually, surprisingly, because the I'm an idiot news is, for some reason, I don't know why, I had it. I had it taken out of, I had it in single shot instead of burst mode. So I have it in electronic shutter. I'm nice and quiet. I've got my fast shutter speed to freeze the frame when they take off. And I've only got one shot of them taking off. And somehow, luckily, the focus was good. The exposure is right. The shutter speed was fast enough. So, I mean, I think maybe it's an okay shot. I haven't edited it yet, but. Future me will show you that right now. There's a buffalo head. I just saw him dive. I only saw one though. He just dove. Oh, he's so far away. <laughs> I miss my teleconverter so bad. Oh, why am I such an idiot? Don't answer that, Brittany. If the camera's shaking right now, There it is. There I dove again. Biscuits. Okay, well, we're on the right side for buffalo heads. We're gonna come back to this one. Let's keep going this way. We're not doing very much hiking today. My battery's dying. <laughs> oh my God. I just got situated. Oh, come on, other battery. Please be in there. No. Oh. No. Oh. Come on. Yes. Okay. Business. Brittany, camera lady suggesting I've lost keys before. Okay, back in the pockets. Now we're prepared and we're ready. Where did the grief go? Are you kidding me? Oh, there he is.
this ruddy duck's got his, his the male. He's got his uh, his breeding plumage. It's kind of early for that. But when they have the breeding plumage, they have uh, blue bills. They're really pretty. And he's already started. And he just dove. And uh, now I don't see him. Is that him way out there? No. Shoot. He might be going with the current, so I'll go down there a little bit. Just dove again. Right there. Oh my god. This is the worst way to do duck photography, just so you know. It's highly ill advised. See, this one is almost starting to, but their heads. The male's heads get dark black and they get this real white patch on them and then they get the really blue bill. They look really pretty in their breeding plumage and it's almost the season. This guy's got it a little bit on him. Look at that, a little bit of a blue tint to it. It's coming. It's not completely developed yet or blued, plumaged. I don't, I don't know. Hmm. Uh, you can you can kind of see it in that. That's cool. You can see the blue coming out. All right. Well. I like these things, but I don't like being so high above the water. That was another blue heron. Oh, it just popped up right there, right after we stood up. And he's got much more of the white on him. Oh my God. <laughs> You want to photograph ducks? Stay put. Don't move. Oh my god. Here comes a heron. I mean, he's nine miles away. There he goes. Look at him. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, he's going to go into that tree. He just landed in a tree. Oh, look, you want to see something stupid? This is how far away the, the mergansers are. You see those white thingies over there? Those are common mergansers. Yeah, that one just flapped. Uh, mergansers are really hard to get close to. You want to shoot mergansers, like your best bet is definitely with a blind or a hide or ghillie suit or something, which I think I'm going to come back out here and bring the proper stuff and go get out there before the sun comes up, lay down. 
you got to know their cove. You, you got to know like their habits and stuff too. You know, like a lot of the ducks like mergansers, they like shallower water because it's easy. They can't hold their breath as long as some of those other diving ducks can. So they like the shallower water, like the coves and stuff that has all the yuckies growing in and all the... Your pretty duck just flew off. Yeah, the there. pretty duck just flew off. Yeah. <sighs> Anyways, learn your bird habits. It'll definitely help you when you're not doing what I'm doing and setting up properly. I came out here for eagles and didn't see one eagle. We heard the jay screaming like a hawk. <laughs> but that was about it. All right. Let's keep going, see if I see any more... Uh, slightly plumaged ready ducks he's going he's there he's going out though Well, I got him. Kind of. So this, I keep telling you guys, like, this is the best lens ever. Wow, that was a random car. Yeah, I know, hold on, I'm getting there. Because all I had was my 500, but I, this, this is the one to, the RF one to 400, and it's so stupidly small and tiny and light that I can keep it on me all the time for situations like this when we're driving by and we see an incredible sunset. We were on our way home, by the way. Uh, I forgot to mention that. We're just gonna finish this video up in the studio. But first, I wanted to pick off a couple of shots of these layers. It's kind of a silhouette, but you know what? I'm okay with that. All right, I'm gonna do a quick pano vertical huh. wow that looks really nice man if we were here like 10 minutes ago that would have been amazing but the layering on this mountain is so nice all right well i think that's good so we're going to wrap it up in the studio and uh I wanted to show you guys a couple, maybe uh, a couple of the edits from the ducks, and then we'll talk about the rest of the failures. <laughs> we'll see you in a second. All right, back in the studio, I just finished editing the whole video. I didn't realize how much I talked although that shouldn't be a surprise. <laughs> I had a few more things I wanted to say, but they're really not necessary. So I do, I did want to just jump in the computer and show you guys a couple of quick edits, just so you can get an idea of like how I'm dealing with these gray days, which don't happen often where I live. I get about 330 days of sunshine a year. So having a completely overcast day. Uh, anyways, I, let's just jump in and I'll show you how I'm editing a couple, just so you can see the before and afters and get a quick idea of what I'm doing. All right, let's just take a look at this ready duck real quick. This is one of the ones that started to have its breeding plumage. I, that's why I was telling you about the white patch and the blue bill. The bill's gonna get a lot more blue and this is gonna get a lot more white and this is gonna get darker. 
but just very overcast. So I'm just going to do a few things to it, not much. I'm just going to throw a little preset on there, do a few things. I really want to exaggerate the, the mood here, so I'm going to cool the background down quite a bit. And it's also going to help this little bit of orange flare and this overall warmer tone that he has. It's just going to help that pop a little bit. So this is just a super quick edit. I think I'll leave, whoops, I think I'll leave the original ratio because I like the way he's shaped here. I got to watch it because I was already in crop mode. So I don't want to go lower than 2160 on these picks on the height. It's just a personal preference. I'm going to lean, since he's looking to the, to my camera, right? I'm going to put him on this left third, give him a little more room to breathe. And then I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to do a little sharpening and luminar. All right, I don't want the sharpening on the whole layer, so I'm just going to select the subject and hit mask. And there we have a mask. And that's rudimentary, but good enough for me. And then just as one more extra step, I'm going to make a new layer, stamp visible layer. And then I'm going to come back in camera raw and I'm going to blur, I'm going to soften the background just a pinch more with the noise reduction. That really helps smooth things out. I think I'm just going to go overall, bring it up to a little bit. And I'm still going to do this again. I'm going to brighten the shadows. Just add a little more contrast there. And then just a pinch of overall saturation. All right, there we go. A little before and after. So that, that's it. That's all I'm doing to this one. Super simple. So look at this. Here's the before and the after. So this might be, after you look at it too long, maybe this might be a little much on the blues. But that's okay. I'm cool with it. It definitely has a look. Oh, look at this guy. So I got, I got this uh, Canyon Tohi on the way home while well, walking back to the car. And I turned it into this. Just a little clean up there and a massive crop. But I really, I really like the look he's given me. That's such a fantastic look. I went ahead and edited this one because I just liked the framing and the reeds. And, and I know he's obscured, but I really think that that hits the environmental portrait and really showcases just, you know, the way these guys live. And, you know, I, I just like it, even though it's a very imperfect and this would probably bug a lot of people. But seeing his eye there and having him with this A-frame, I really kind of enjoyed that. And then I got this one, but he's looking away. That was kind of a bummer. But again, still a nice environmental portrait. He's got some seeds, grass seeds he was eating. All right, and that's it. Super quick edits, uh, nothing too fancy. I did do, you know, on some of those, a uh, couple of the Sparrow stuff, I, I did do a bit of object removal and stuff like that, and, and some pretty hardcore tonal color shifts and, and whatnot. But in terms of technical difficulty and amount of layers and all that stuff, it was it was pretty chill. But I just I just wanted you to see, you know, it wasn't a tutorial or anything. I just wanted you to see, kind of just a quick rundown of like what I do. I I think I might start adding that this little bit into more of the stuff into more of the videos because I think it's uh it's just interesting to see what people are doing even if it's not like a full tutorial just getting exposed to you know my editing workflow and and what I'm thinking about when I'm editing and, and the before and the afters all right well I'm gonna wrap it up here definitely made this video longer than it probably needed to be but that's how I roll so hopefully you guys enjoyed all of the failures out there <laughs> watching Camera lady definitely snuck some B-roll in there. I wasn't expecting of just, you know, filming me being ridiculous and missing the shots. 
but I wanted to leave it in because uh, that's that's what it was like out there. And uh, we had a blast, you know, just being out there, being out in nature. We had a great time. All right, well, if you enjoyed that, hit the like button for me. If you haven't already, you should definitely subscribe. Uh, do this kind of stuff all the time, weekly videos. Uh, check out the channel memberships if you're into supporting the channel and you want some extra. I got a lot of extra tutorials and, and editing and just behind the scenes talk and all that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of videos up there on the channel memberships. Workshops, check out the workshops down below. I've still got one spot left for Scotland 2024 and I think three spots left for 2025. Uh, spring 2025 private birding workshops in new mexico and arizona if you're interested in that kind of stuff links are down below thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one